Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to break down the newest episode from the TV series Outlander. Now, we've done a lot of work on this series in the past as it relates to a Scottish prophecy that we had uncovered that seemed to bring us back to these particular standing stones in Scotland. We also figured out how Thump fit into this and also into the Highlander legends. Many of you will remember those videos. Thump actually invited a particular individual that wrote the Highlander books to his penthouse. Here's the picture here. So, he said, great book. This is where I got my fighting spirit. So, there's a Highlander connection to this. Now, the rabbit hole goes much deeper with this because the Highlander leaks in, links in to the Outlander series that we're going to cover today. And the series is about a circle of standing stones that you can see here in Google Earth. And let's zoom in on this. Because these standing stones are in the shape of an inverted cross as you can see on your screen right here here's the inverted cross these stones are well known and here is where things get very serious because these standing stones are sitting at precisely a 77 degree angle and seven and seven miles away, 14 miles from where Thump's mother grew up. So 14 miles and 77 degrees away. Now I'm going to show this to you in Google Earth so that you can see I'm not making this up. And you also see that the stones seem to align. This red line here seems to align and point the way. The cross member of the inverted cross. Let's zoom this out here. And let's go to the city of Tung. Whoops. That's the wrong direction. Tung, Scotland. Let's go back to the stones. So I want to show this to you. Now we had already covered all this. In previous videos. Some of those videos went viral. Um, others did not. Here are the standing stones and the cross. Let's zoom this back up because I want to show this to you. This is very, very important as we get into this Outlander series. There you see the near perfect alignment. Now I want you to watch the red line that I drew connecting the standing stones seven and seven miles away at a 77 degree heading east to Tong. Now, I was able to identify, and as you can see, I put the line right on the house where, right to the front doorstep of where his mother grew up. Now, when I tell you the plot of the Outlander series, then you'll be blown away because it's all about time travel. So I'm going down on the street view, and as you can see, this is the house. Now I'm going to show you images of him at the house here so none of this is stretching none of this is being made up you can go into google earth and do all the same analysis that i'm doing right here it's the same exact house this guy must be the caretaker or something as you can see here now i think we know now what the 77 means Right? Because wasn't it 70 and 7 years and 7 months or something when he became president? It, all of this is planned. Now, in the Outlander series, these stones, they're actually named by name, the calendar stones in the series. They were used for time travel. It was a time travel portal used by these wish witches. And 
let's zoom back in on this. Here are the stones. And what they would do is they would offer sacrifices. And the best time in the original time that they actually, the very first time in the series where the, the witches traveled through these stones was on Sawin, which goes from Halloween to the 5th of November. Now, here's where things get even more weird, because if you look here, this is the main actress. You're going, we're going to basically break all this down in this newest episode of Outlander. Katrina Balf. Balf, right? Like bald. We're going to get into that in the show later as well. But she was born with 88 days left in the year, October 4th. 88 days left in the year. Of course, that's a time travel number as well. So now that I have your attention, let's break down this episode. Now, this was filmed long before any announcements were made about people losing their hair, balding as a result of their Vidco-19 infections, or the smack of the nation. Let me give you the backdrop of this episode before we dig into this. So, Katrina plays... A woman named Claire. She's a time traveler. She is the time traveler in the series. And she walks through the Standing Stones. I think in the original episode, in the very beginning of all this, she went through on Sawin because her and her, her first husband walk into this little cafe or some kind of restaurant or something, or maybe it was a hotel, and they they basically talk to the person in charge there and they explain to them that it is Sawin and they start talking about it. And from that point, right around that time is where Claire goes missing because she walked into the stones. So she goes back in time and she finds what she believes is her true love. She leaves her timeline behind and the rest of the series is basically telling the historical story of the trials that they face because she's out of time. She's out of phase with her timeline. So it brings about all of these unlucky circumstances. The only thing really holding her to the timeline is this intense love that she has for this man that she met. But everything else is horrible. It's like a living nightmare. And of course, it's a much harsher time in history. This goes back to the Jacobite Rebellion, so they tell a lot of the history of what happened during these time periods. And now, in this latest episode, they've made it to the 13 colonies of America. And they're in one of the colonies helping to establish America. There's a revolution happening and a couple other things. So, in this episode, she comes down with a sickness. She comes down with a sickness. And her family cuts her hair to try and cure her fever. Watch. Lizzie's with her. Here's some willow bark tea for you. Lizzie's with her. Here's some willow bark tea for you. So this girl offers him some willow bark tea. This is Claire's husband. Willow, of course, is all about making your hair grow many of you that are into like herbal remedies and stuff understand that willow bark tea makes your hair grow and this is why in ancient rome the statue of artemis was found under a willow tree next to these two brothers one of them named alopecius like alopecia now we looked into that ancient myth but it all fits in. Willow shaving her head. Will Smith. Um, the willow tree. Artemis. Which is wormwood. Which is radiation. Which causes baldness. It all completes the circle. Let's keep watching here. Willow bark tea. Now I did not find this. One of you sent me this episode. You're like, hey Casey, you got to watch the newest episode of Outlander. Because it's everything you've been talking about. Let's keep watching here because now they're going to introduce the snake bites. I kill us. Huh. It's just the same tea Claire made for me. Says, is this the same tea Claire made for me? I'm going to turn off Google Earth here. 
so we don't get messed up here. Is this the same tea Claire made for me? When I was out with a snake bite. When I had a snake bite. Now, many of you will remember that episode that we decoded probably about last year. And in that episode, Jamie, this is Jamie, gets a snake bite. And Claire has to give him an anti-venom. Are you getting chills yet? Because we've been talking all about this, haven't we? And how does she do it? She has to go find the snake and use the snake's fangs as a syringe. Because they're hollow. She uses the bite, so he, she bites basically, in effect, she bites him again with the fangs of the snake and then inserts the anti-venom and it saves his life. Make sure we're connected. We're going to keep going with this. This is shocking. Let me close Google Earth. Um, save. Sorry. Okay, let's keep going. No, sir. Snake bite. Are you badly hurt? Almost lost my leg. A great rat is there. Maybe so, but they have a wicked bite. I'm they have a wicked bite. Now, i got to keep pausing this. I don't know if the, the algos are going to pick this up as, a, as some kind of copyright. So, I'm just, this is why I keep pausing. It's not to annoy you guys. It's to make sure the channel is safe. Let's keep watching. I'm terrified of snakes. I saw a king snake the other day. She's terrified of snakes. Hmm. You haven't been bitten, have you? No, sir. But Mr. Crombie was. He brought one in a box to a Sunday meeting once. For they shall take up poisonous serpents and suffer no harm. When he opened it, the snake came out like a jack-in-the-box and bit him. So the snake came out with a jack-in-the-box. So that has to be a clown reference to the clown that brought us the snake bite. Janice and Jombries. Which is... Thump and Bo Jivin. The two clowns. Like a jack in a box and bit him on the lip. So Claire is in the midst of this fever and she starts hallucinating while she's, you know, under this fever and she starts seeing uh, the snake. She starts seeing a beating heart. Of course, organs are the first things affected by a snake bite body, as the body shuts down. Let's keep watching here. And then when she finally... Malva and Mrs. Buck got off the day before yesterday. What? She finally emerges from the fever and she has had her hair cut. Now it's not bald, but the inference here is hair falling out, isn't it? Which is exactly what happens when you get bit by a snake. Look at this. Excessive hair loss from snake bites. Let's keep watching. I want to They thought it's what you do for someone with a terrible fever. What? Jane and I weren't here or we wouldn't have let them, of course. So, it's all happening right now, isn't it? Katrina Balf going bald in this newest episode of Outlander. Now... You ready for this? What is the treatment or one of the treatments for snake bite baldness? Let me scroll this up so you can see this. Indigenous snake bite remedies of the Luo of Western Kenya. What is one of the remedies for snake bites? Now again, one of you sent this to me. I don't go around hunting for this stuff. It is Biden Pelosi. Flavonoids. I'll link all of these studies so you guys can see this with your own eyes. Anti-inflammatory activity of Biden-Pelosi flavonoids in laboratory animals studies 
significant inhibition of lethality, myotoxicity, and venom enzyme activities. You guys, what is happening here? We're living in some kind of spiritual matrix, aren't we? Where people's lives, birthdays, their names manifest into this reality. Somehow, some way. I don't know the mechanism behind this. It has to be from the spiritual realm. And then as I showed you here, snake bites actually cause hair loss. Now, let's keep going with this. Because in ancient Egypt, here's another study. One of you sent me a hair raising question or hair, hair raising history of alopecia. Remember, alopecus was the brother found under the willow tree with Artemis. Let's keep reading here. Because it says, baldness was associated with a snake bite in ancient Egypt. A 35-year-old, 3,500-year-old papyrus. Ancient Egypt provides a list of treatments for many diseases, including bite hair loss. Most likely, alopecia areata. The treatment of AA remained largely unchanged for over 1,500 years. In 30 CE, Celsus described AA presenting as scalp alopecia in spots or the windings of a snake. They called the balding spots the winding of a snake. Let's keep watching here. Let's get that hair of yours sorted out. You look ridiculous. <laughs> Much better. During my fever, I saw blue herons. Now, at this point, toward the middle of this episode, Claire then starts recounting the details of her snake dream. She tells her husband Jamie what she dreamed, and it was all about a blue snake. Which, of course, is the copper serpent. Why is it copper? Because copper, when it oxidizes, turns blue-green. Let's watch here and listen to what she says about her dream and the blue snake. I saw blue herons. Blue is the color of healing. But this time, I saw a snake. Storm clouds. My heart. it was in this house. A snake crosses our threshold. Or lose his head. I can promise you, Sasnik. We'll lose his head. The serpent will be crushed in the head. Now, if you didn't know by now, the ancient pharaohs shaved their heads bald. Now, supposedly the cover story we get is because it's because of lice. But there was a whole thing behind this. Because what else they did is they added wormwood to their wine. Herbal wine, just a thing for ailing pharaohs. Uh, chemicals recovered from the pottery indicates that in addition to wine, there were savory blue, tansy, and artemisia, a member of the wormwood family. Are you seeing all this connect together? And in fact, the ancient Egyptians were some of the first civilizations to invent the umbrella to protect their bald heads from the sun. Wow. Now, here's where everything gets brought all the way forward to the present. Because the Catholic Church renamed the umbrella. And guess what they called it? A baldachin. This is a baldachin. It's a canopy of state. So it's basically a glorified umbrella. That showed the importance of 
whoever was underneath it. Many of them were square in shape, but others were not. As you can see down here in this Wikipedia article. Here's a square one. And there were some round ones as well, I think. Let me scroll this down. It looks like most of these baldachins were square umbrellas. Many of them went on over beds. And when they would carry these people around on these processions. Unbelievable. Now, this was going to be, this was a short show today. But based on everything that's come to light over the past 48 hours... I think this is confirmed beyond the shadow of a doubt that the work that we've been working on for the past several years on the snake bite is all coming to fruition. It's all being exposed right now. Now, directly following this show, I found the world's largest smack scene needle. Where was it? In Manhattan. So in about, uh, let's see, another hour, I have a premiere set. Go to the channel, please sign up for it, and I will see you guys over there for the premiere. It's not very long, it's about 10 minutes long, but you're going to want to see this. Let me go into the chat for a little bit, because we are done early, see what you guys are up to. I wish I was making all this up, but you can't. You can't make this up. It is what it is. Now, someone could say, all of what you just said are coincidences. Someone could say that. Look, all... But after a while, you run out of coincidences, don't you? Because the puzzle pieces fit together so perfectly. The puzzle pieces fit together so perfectly. You can no longer deny it. So I tell people, when you come to this channel and you watch one video, you're probably going to think I'm crazy. But then after you've watched five videos, you it will be undeniable at that point. Because nothing we present falls outside of the puzzle. It all fits together perfectly. All right. The spiritual matrix. I, it's what I think we're actually seeing here. I think that's what's happening. And it's God warning us against certain things, isn't it? You know, it's crazy because I, some of the big box Christian channels do not like me. In fact, many of them do not. They have called me names. They've called me a sorcerer or a warlock. Or they've come up with all these names to scare people away from seeing this stuff. And this is as they march their own people into the line to get poked. They can say with a straight face that nothing on this channel has helped to warn the body of Christ against certain things. So, this is a spiritual battle, you guys. You know, sometimes I just want to turn the dial off because it's a it's a very heavy burden to carry seeing what we see here and doing what we do. But we have to keep going because this is a labor of love. This is what this is the mission that I've been given by the most high and I can't stop if I'm to fully serve him and try to warn as many people as possible. And, you know, even though a lot of the work that we've done here has preceded some of these world events, I still will not call myself a prophet. I'm not a prophet. But look how easily many other of these Christian channels will jump on the I'm a prophet bandwagon. I'm an angel of the church of so-and-so. I'm a prophet. Well, run from those people. Because that is not humility. God doesn't want us pumping ourselves up. He wants us to give him all the glory. He wants us to point people back to his son for salvation. Not sit here and try to say, oh, I'm something special. Because I'm nothing. I'm just a willing vessel to do his, his will. So that we can warn as many people as possible. So... You guys are all mentioning Watch the Water. Yes, that would be the segue. That's the show that kind of ties it all in together. Now, I'm going to tell you, I don't know if I agree with every single thing in that documentary. You know, I don't know if it's the water. Um, 
So just know that. But the parts about the snake and the venom are very, very real. Okay, it's very, very real. Also, the doctor on there seems to suggest that um, nicotine has some role in preventing something. And so I don't know if I agree with that either. Because you're, you're going to probably die from lung cancer before you get protected from any kind of, you know, stuff. So just understand that when you watch this stuff, don't think that 100% I endorse every single thing said. But you will see the connections. You will see the connections to the work we've done, which validates the work. So... What else is going on in here? All right, let's read some of these comments. All right, now for tomorrow, we'll probably do some headlines. I do have a couple headlines pulled up. Maybe we'll uh, also, you know, slow down and break down this this premiere that's going to be uploading in about an hour. We can we can look at that tomorrow. So we, we'll have a show tomorrow. It'll be Friday. It'll just kind of be a little less uh, intense. And we can just kind of focus and get caught up on where the world is at right now. I just got an email from YouTube, I think yesterday. And they said, anybody who minimizes what's happening in the nuke crane or pretends like it's not happening or blames the victims or blah, 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 blah. All of your videos will be unmonetized. Insert coin asked for my email to Casey Brown 1973 at gmail.com. And so they're coming out full force against anybody who questions their narrative. Okay, it wasn't enough just to censor, you know, anything, every, you know, all of the other alternative sources on what's happening in the new crane. That wasn't enough. Now they're going after and just defunding anybody talking about it. So we're probably not going to talk too much more about the conflict over there. There's really nothing to talk about. It's pretty much a mass sacrifice is what it is. You're tricking people into taking each other out. And people are falling for it. You got people here falling, you know, going over there to help them. Um, so we're probably not going to do too many more shows on that. All right. What, else, what other questions you guys are up to? Yeah, they're tyrants. But unfortunately, you know, this platform is the one that actually has a fighting chance at getting the word out to other people. They've tried to basically pigeonhole the truth movement into these alternative sites. And then the alternative sites don't really grow because you're not getting new people. You're just getting the people coming off of YouTube. How do I know this? Because when you do searches on a video... Which 90% of people use a Google search. You do a Google search on a video for a certain topic or subject. You don't ever see those alternative site videos coming up. It's because Google has erased them. Google owns YouTube. So they erase it from the search results. So it's only a matter of time before the stranglehold takes place. And those sites will just slowly just trickle away. Now people will always be able to find those sites. But it gets to the point where... You know, it's so easy for YouTube to basically starve out or suffocate. Because that's what serpents do, right? They starve out and suffocate. And so, this is what's going to happen to those sites. This is why I didn't invest too much time. You see massive channels like KJ, who's my friend. Massive channels over there and they barely can get, you know, 10 or 20,000 subscribers. Well, it's not because they only have 10 or 20,000 people that follow them. It's because they... Or because of YouTube's algorithms and Google's algorithms to hide those sites. That's what's going on. So I wish the best for those sites, but I honestly think that it's just the beginning of the end. So. All right. Okay. What else is going on here in the chat? So I'm probably right after I get off here, I'll probably just pop over on to um you know to the premiere and i'll hang out with you guys in the chat over there let's do that i love each and every one of you hope you guys have a great day and i'll see you over in the premiere take care and be safe